Good morning, how's it going? So the Teletubby tidal wave, uh, it went down pretty well as far as I'm aware. It managed to work and didn't need recharging for the whole duration of the Ramsgate Festival of Sound when it was set up. People came from all around to play on it. Apparently even a Teletubby fan came all the way from Wales to have a go on it. It was nice to see the machine cheering up passers-by and stuff, getting a play on it and making the Teletubbies do their dancey thing. So over the next few days, I need to mount the Teletubbies up and down the corridor so you people can play it and it will be hopefully up and running by the time that the museum opens this weekend. The tickets are available for this weekend below amongst other weekends and stuff. The slot times for the tickets are really rough. People have been staying for as long as they want really and people have been turning up whenever they want. So don't worry about it. The slot times on the tickets are just vague and rough guidance. So yeah, if you want to come this weekend, have a play on the Teletubby Tidal Wave amongst all the other things. Well, the links are below. We're currently sat in a nice cozy little cubby hole in the museum. This bit is sort of a little bit of a placeholder right now. It's uh, sort of been uh, where all of the bits I'm not sure where to put have been sat. There's a collection of film and video cameras including a old reconnaissance World War II camera and we're going to be using that pretty soon. That's pretty exciting. But this stuff is all going to be moving into a new room that's going to be a bit more dedicated to sound and vision and that's something I'm going to be working on in the next few months as well. The coffin of course is going to be going into the toilet. And the toilet, well initially I was planning on putting the toilet in the toilet, however then you know the probably you probably don't want to be putting a fake toilet in a toilet because some people may get the wrong idea. <laughs> but what is going to go in place of all of these things? Well if you've been following this channel for any amount of time you may know that I was doing a series about a year ago called Test Equipment Rock and it was basically trying to make music with old pieces of test equipment. I've been doing it for a couple of years and stuff and ever since last year where I was working in my older place which was in the back of an MOT garage I had to move out at the beginning of the first lockdown. Well uh, the Test Equipment Rock hasn't been as easy because I've been quite busy with other projects including setting up the museum and stuff. And the plan has always been with this was to make a musical setup that you could play, uh, yeah, and make music out of test equipment. And now is finally the time to embark on this to make it an interactive setup for people to come and play on the test equipment and yeah, try and make music of their own. Because right now the brawling cares are just sat around and what's the point in hoarding things if you're not going to be using them? So yeah, we may as well make them usable. The brawling cures are going to be over here and behind me is going to be a patch bay and some wall mount modular synthesizer modules that are going to suit the brawling cure setup, which makes it very usable. And then hopefully after that, there will be um, residences and whatnot for people to play on here and hopefully people can come and watch what these people are doing in the residencies uh, if they if they so please. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First thing we need to do is uh, yeah, start figuring out what the fudge we need to do. So throughout the upcoming videos on this project, we're going to be looking at the different brawling cures and how we're going to be modifying them and making them best suited for being in a musical setting. The two that we have behind me right now are 1022 beat frequency oscillators. And through these videos, we'll be looking at where they came from as well. In fact, these two, uh, I'm pretty sure they came from the same lot. In 2019, I spent quite a lot of time emailing uh, at different universities and recycling centers and places like that. And I ended up getting both of these in a lot and they ended up costing about completely untested they ended up costing uh, with a few more about 30 pounds each in the end of the day you wouldn't want to be spending more than 80 pounds or so on these things if they're untested I've seen on eBay uh, they've been listed for quite a bit more than that and I think those prices are completely unrealistic for something that literally goes woo the 1022 beat frequency oscillator basically sends a sine sweep between 20 Hertz and 20 kilohertz I'm pretty sure uh, they're very similar to the 1013 and in fact if you look at the 1970s uh, catalogue it basically says the 1022 is pretty much the same but it's got a much more limited sweep range but actually these are much more usable than the 1013 because most of this is in audio range so you can actually you can actually hear it So we're going to be looking at the Brule and Cure's functionalities with music in mind. But these ones, bone stock, still have some usable features to them. So you got from 20 hertz yes. right up to 20,000 hertz. Woo! got a reference signal of a thousand hertz if you really want to tune this and get it right and you've got the reference signal right here so you can already sort of play it like a musical instrument mm -hmm. 
But this has also got a modulation section right here. It's got modulation frequency and frequency deviation, which is basically how much the sound will modulate. So you got that, and you can speed up that. It's also got a compressor, which in audio form isn't actually super useful, but it does act as a good clipping distortion to make it sound a little bit more grispy. So last weekend when the museum was open, I spent the time modifying this to make it uh, usable and playable in a safe manner. Because they aren't the safest things in the standard form, this is the output right here. You put in a banana jack like so. Ooh, ooh. And if you twist this here over to the 120 volts, well, you can have a 120 volt signal coming out on here. So it's not the best if you have a kid putting that in their mouth. However, the modification that I did to make it safe for the open day was basically to bypass this whole section. If we turn this one around specifically, you can see. So now we've turned this around, you can see that that part is literally just a board right there. Just a quick obligatory disclaimer about this stuff. If you have one of these and you take it apart, uh, well, beware, don't do it unless you know what you're doing, basically. These capacitors can still hold charge. If it's on, there can be some lethal voltages in here. So if you're thinking of doing this and you have no experience in this stuff, please seek help from somebody who knows their stuff. Uh, yeah, don't just open this if you haven't got a clue what you're doing because there is, it can be dangerous and you could be killed by things inside here, so be very careful. So around the back of here, what I did was I disconnected this uh, banana jack. This is the back of the banana jack. So there's no actual access to the audio output from the front. Another thing I did was I bypassed this whole selector board because these two knobs at the front, they aren't really that useful in a musical setting anyway. So there's no point them being there. What I ended up doing was uh, getting a uh, audio jack from the bottom uh, selector right at the bottom. This is the 12 volt output. So what that does is it sends 12 volts out into here. I added a resistor onto the end of the jack socket. I think it's 100K. And this means that these two knobs, which aren't usable in the musical setting, are completely bypassed and you have an audio output coming out the back. So yeah, all of the dangerous bits are not accessible from the front. And after that, I wired it up to an electro harmonics ring modulator pedal. And yeah, people were able to play on it and, you know, make some funky space sounds. <laughs> So the next thing we're going to talk about is the fact that these are both 1022s. They've got exactly the same functionality. However, they look slightly different. Have a look, see if you can spot the difference if you haven't already. So if you have a look at this one, the meter is pretty big and chunky right there. And if we go over to this one, well, it's a lot thinner and a lot smaller. Also, there's a slight variation on this knob. As you can see, this one with the larger meter actually has a smaller twisted twisty than this one over here, which is a bit more, bit bigger. Ooh. And the changes don't stop there. For instance, this one, if we pick it up, oh, it's still pretty heavy, but it's, it's not super heavy. And then this one, oh my God, weighs an absolute ton. If you haven't guessed what the difference is yet, let's turn it around and it may become a little bit more apparent. Oh, here's one. And here's the slightly lighter one. There we go. So in the product lifespan of the 1022, well, transistors became commercially viable to be replacements for valves. So what we have here are actually two 1022s that look pretty much the same. However, this one is a valve version and this one is a transistor version. But Brule and Cure kept the same enclosure design even down to all of the holes. As you can see, all the holes are still there for all of the valves. However, it's all been replaced with, yeah, this specific one I haven't recapped yet is a different one to the one in the museum, but as you can see, yeah, there's transistors. And if we go down to the buffer board, which over here, you see there's a couple of valves there and they've been completely replaced 
with transistors. But does this make a difference in the sound? Well, let's find out. As far as musical application is concerned, the short answer is no, and the long answer is no. <laughs> Having experience with both of them, I have to say the solid state one is much easier to work with. It turns on straight away, it doesn't use as much current, obviously. Also, the solid state one takes fused shaped pilot bulbs, either the ones that illuminate the meters, and these give a much more uniform spread. I think they just worked on it a little bit more to make it light up a little bit better. However, this one is still equally awesome, and it's valve, of course, so it makes it a heck of a lot more interesting and stuff. Next up, let's have a look at the instructions and applications. You can find this on the internet, uh, PDF files and such like that. If I can find one, I will share a link to the description below. In here's a bunch of interesting stuff and if you're interested in this stuff it's definitely worth a read. You can see how you can wire it up to a chart recorder via the 0040 which is a drive belt which can sync up the knob mechanically to the chart recorder. Uh, it's pretty mad but I have not been able to successfully find one of these but, but we'll have a look at a little plan I have for this in a little bit. You can check your hearing aids with this of course it looks like you're using this with a chart recorder and then it's going into a couple of mic preamps and then this little uh, isolation box but what we need to find in here is uh where is it where is it where is it here we go remote control this is going to be useful so the remote control input usually has one of these inside of it but when it's not in there you can plug whatever you're damn well wanting you can plug in something to turn on the magnetic clutch we'll have a look at that in a little bit you can stop the oscillator from functioning there's a ground and this is the one we're interested in it's the external modulation so from the front you can find this right here and the external modulation is B, which is one, two. It's that one right there. You can get to the back of it, down at the back of this. Once again, be careful, same disclaimer applies. And then that is where it connects up to. All you need to do is wire a jack socket to that. Make sure the cable is either shielded or as short as possible to reduce noise. But with this I've found, you can send in control voltage between minus five volts and plus five volts, and it's reasonably useful. So that means I can send in sequences from things like this. This is the 2000 2001 sequencer and this is the latest Cosmo PCB panel project. The link is below with information on this. It's got a lot of updates since the last DIY project of the keyboard sequencer. But we're going to plug this into the brawling here and see what noises it makes. <laughs> So as you can see, it works pretty well, but the 2001 keyboard sequencer can also send out two separate eight step sequences. So we may as well get these both running at the same time. Not only that, but you can send whatever you want into the control voltage input. So as long as it's between minus five volts and plus five volts, anything higher or lower doesn't seem to affect it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna plug one of the outputs into the input of the other one to frequency modulate it and get some funky sounds that way. <laughs> Yeah!
that isn't all. Remember in the booklet where I said you can mechanically sync up the chart recorder to this, so it mechanically moves it via a twisty thing. Well, this twisty thing bolts into that. And when you twist this and you have the magnetic clutch on, that uh, is basically a clutch on this gear right here. Well, what this does is it spins the coarse tune knob. I'm twisting the axle around the back, which is making the knob twist. Most sprue liqueurs of this time have an electromechanical function like this. This one specifically is to directly sync it up to the chart recorder. So it runs for a sign sweep. So this runs and then the chart recorder uh, kind of records it in time. So let's say this sign sweep goes through a microphone and then the chart recorder's listening for some noise and it listens through that sweep and looks at the graph or something. The filter banks also have something like this as well as the stepped filtered banks. These have solenoids on the back and I've already tried to flick them through and make them move on their own there. It's pretty cool. So yesterday I started experimenting with this and thinking of ways that we could use this in a musical kind of form and the one right behind us has got a little bit of a modification. So the eagle eyes amongst you may notice this stepper motor right here. Yeah this is directly coupled so it means that we're going to be able to control this uh, yeah via other electronic means. This is only the start of this experiment. I only really started messing around with this yesterday evening but it's already a little bit slow because I've got it on a one-to-one -one gear ratio. I need to increase the gear on on the stepper motor to make it a little bit quicker because yeah it's already geared down by this gear around the back of the knob so it moves a little bit slowly but let's have a look at what this does Ultimately, the plan with this is to make it voltage controlled. Who knows what the actual curve on this knob is, so maybe we might be even be able to calibrate this to play in tune. I haven't got a bleeding clue, but what I need to do first is mess around with this a little bit, and there'll be an update on this uh, in the coming week. So that's it for the Brawl and Care project today. It's very early doors. There's lots to talk about, so subscribe if you haven't already, if you're interested to seeing this stuff. And if you're interested in the samples while well, I've been uploading them whilst I've been doing this project and messing around and experimenting throughout the week over on Patreon, uh, there's loads of them out actually up there so if you want to use them for this that and the other then go and check it out over there and patreon also helps and supports the museum and the opening of that because yeah it probably wouldn't be possible without that stuff talking about the museum if you want to play on a couple of these brawling cures well there will be set up this weekend uh, to play on them over in the interactive area so you can to your heart's content and like i mentioned there's links to the tickets below anyway i've been looking on my computer these are the brawling cure type 1022s and yeah don't be scared to try it